Within one week, 73 earthquakes had occurred beneath Mount Spur. At first, they were too small to feel and too deep to notice, so life across South Central Alaska continued exactly as it had the week before. Anchorage traffic still moved, planes still landed, snow still clung to the ground in places where it always did. Nothing appeared wrong to the community, yet beneath ice and rock, something was moving often enough to be concerning. The earthquakes didn't arrive all at once. They appeared spaced out, irregular, the kind of pattern that doesn't trigger alarm bells on its own. No sirens, no emergency briefings, no changes to daily routines, and just data points stacking up. For most people, the volcano didn't affect their days at all. Mount Spur sat where it always had, miles away, partially hidden by weather and distance. It hadn't erupted in decades. It wasn't glowing. It wasn't steaming in any dramatic way. And because nothing could be felt, the question didn't come from the public. It came from the instruments. At first, nothing seemed missing. The numbers were there. The systems were working. The earthquakes were detected. But as the days passed, the picture didn't sharpen much. Satellites searched for signs of gas rising from the volcano, a common clue that magma is moving closer to the surface but gas detections were inconsistent. Some passes showed nothing at all. That didn't mean gas wasn't there. It meant the satellites couldn't see it. On the ground, instruments measured subtle changes in the shape of the volcano, tiny movements that can indicate pressure building below. Some deformation appeared, then it stalled, then it flattened out again. Nothing crossed a clear line. Every signal existed just enough to be noticed, but not enough to be decisive. The earthquakes continued, and that persistence mattered. Volcanic unrest doesn't always announce itself with spectacle. Sometimes it unfolds in fragments, each piece incomplete on its own. A few earthquakes, a hint of deformation, a missing gas signal that might mean nothing or might mean everything is hidden. The problem wasn't that the data was alarming. The problem was that it wasn't reassuring either. Something was happening beneath the ice. No one could yet say what. When uncertainty grows, memory steps in to help. For Mount Spur, that memory had a name, Crater Peak. In 1992, the volcano erupted from a side vent, sending ash high into the sky and across large parts of Alaska. The signals back then had been clearer. Earthquakes intensified. Tremor appeared. The volcano gave warnings that matched expectations. Those events shaped how Mount Spur was understood. They became the reference point, the mental model. So when new unrest began decades later, it was natural to compare the present to the past. But the comparison didn't line up cleanly. But the deformation this time didn't build steadily the way it had before. The volcano seemed active, but not decisive. That created a quiet tension. If this wasn't what an eruption looked like before, what was it now? Experience is useful until it becomes a filter. The more familiar a pattern is, the easier it becomes to wait for it to repeat. But volcanoes don't owe consistency to memory. And Mount Spur had already demonstrated that it could behave differently. In the early 2000s, it showed signs of unrest without erupting at all. Heat disrupted glaciers, ice melted from below, debris flows formed, then the activity faded, with no explosion and no ash cloud. Just another reminder that unrest doesn't always end the way people expect, which made the present moment harder to categorize. Was this the beginning of something familiar, or the early phase of something that didn't yet have a name? As the weeks passed, official language began to shift. Statements acknowledged that the likelihood of an eruption had increased. To people, this meant that something had changed. The main thing was that two truths existed at once. The system was more restless than before, and it wasn't clearly escalating. For the public, this kind of messaging can feel contradictory. For scientists, it reflects reality. Volcanoes don't move in straight lines. Risk is rarely binary. But uncertainty has a side effect. It leaves room for reassurance to settle in before understanding arrives. If the signs are quite, people assume time exists. If time exists, urgency fades. The earthquakes continued, but they did not grow stronger. The volcano did not change color. No ash fell. No evacuation lines formed. Everything still looked normal. Yet the agreement that everyone was waiting for never came. There was no moment when the data aligned cleanly enough to say, 
this is happening or this is over. The unrest simply hovered, and hovering can be harder to respond to than escalation. Long before this period of unrest, Mount Spur had already shown what it could do to lives far beyond its slopes. When it erupted in the past, ash didn't stay near the volcano. It traveled, it settled into cities, it entered lungs, it shut down airports and businesses. Anchorage, miles away, had felt those effects. Ash clogged storm drains. When snow melted, water had nowhere to go. Flooding followed. Cleanup took months. In some places, resuspended ash continued to affect air quality more than a year later. Those impacts did not require a massive eruption. They came from events that, on paper, might be described as moderate, which meant the question facing the present wasn't whether Mount Spur could erupt violently. It was how much eruption it would take to disrupt daily life again. And how much warning would exist if it did, because the current unrest didn't need to end in catastrophe to matter. It only needed to cross the threshold where ash reached people who weren't watching the volcano at all. The memory of past disruption lingered quietly in the background, shaping preparedness conversations even as the ground remained still. The danger wasn't hypothetical. It just wasn't visible yet. Volcano monitoring is built on a promise that if a system moves toward eruption, it will announce itself clearly enough to act, that earthquakes will intensify, that gas will rise, that deformation will accelerate. Those expectations guide decisions. They inform aviation warnings. They shape municipal planning. They determine when to raise alerts and when to wait. At Mount Spur, that promise rested on assumptions tested by history, but assumptions only work if conditions cooperate. Weather can block satellites, ice can mask surface changes, magma can move without following familiar paths, signals can appear briefly, then fade. The systems watching Mount Spur were functioning as designed. What they couldn't do was eliminate uncertainty. Authorities believed additional warning would come if escalation continued. That belief was reasonable. It was grounded in prior eruptions and established models, but belief is not the same as certainty. And certainty is what people tend to assume exists when no alarms are sounding. The gray zone is where decisions are hardest. Act too early and credibility suffers. Act too late and consequences multiply. In the absence of clear escalation, waiting feels justified until the moment it isn't. Eventually, the unrest slowed. Earthquake counts declined, deformations stalled, near-term eruption probabilities were lowered, no explosion came yet. For many, that feels like relief, a threat that passed, a system that settled down. But settling down is not the same as explaining itself. No single cause was identified. No definitive answer emerged about how much magma moved, how close it came to the surface, or why it stopped. The volcano did not reveal its intent. And that is what lingers. Mount Spur did not erupt during this period, but it demonstrated how much can happen without spectacle, how much risk can accumulate beneath ice and silence, and how difficult it is to know when unrest has truly ended. The system remains active. The conditions that allowed uncertainty to grow still exist. And somewhere beneath the snow and rock, the processes that produced those 73 earthquakes have not been undone. They have only paused. The next time they resume, the same questions will return, and the answers may not arrive any faster than they did this time.